What's up, fellas? Welcome to a brand new episode of The Sports Student. My name is Wendell Epps, a.k.a. The Sports Student. In today's podcast, I'll be joined by a very special guest. Her name is Meredith Gorman. Meredith currently works at the New England Sports Network, also known as Nesson. She has done some incredible things in her sports media career so far, such as covering mega events like the Final Four and the Super Bowl. She also worked as a reporter for the New England Patriots for a couple years, which is very cool. And in this podcast, she'll be sharing her experiences working in the sports media industry, as well as providing some great advice on how to succeed in the industry as a whole. So sit back, relax, enjoy the podcast, and without further ado, this is a sports student interview with Meredith Gorman. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am joined by a very, very, very special guest. I have Meredith Gorman with me. Meredith, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. How are you doing? Of course. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. And I am doing well. Middle of the week, a short week because of the 4th of July last weekend. I'll take it. How are you? I'm doing excellent. It's summertime. It's July. So, you know, this is sort of that prime time for summer. So I'm doing great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So first question I have for you, if you could just go ahead and kind of give a background of what you're doing right now with your career and where you kind of started and really just how did you get to where you are today? Sure. So right now I'm a reporter and host at New England Sports Network, known as Nesson, um, in Boston. And here I cover all of the Boston sports teams. Um, I work in the studio hosting and then I go out in the field as a reporter and I also host a golf show on the side that also airs on Nesson and it airs on Fox Sports Florida and or Valley Sports Florida now that they've switched. And basically that just chronicles like a bunch of different golf courses um, around the country and on the East Coast. So it's fun doing both of those things. But I started off as a one man band <laughs> working for the Boston Herald. That was my first you know, real full time job out of college. Um, I shot, edited, produced all my own stuff, and I covered the sports teams here. I covered news. I also worked some side jobs while I was doing that as a production assistant at Nesson. You know, I worked as a PA for um, like the NFL on CBS when they would have their games uh, in New England. So I did some other things on the side while I was doing that. And then I went to the Patriots as their team reporter after that. Um, and did some other freelance things here and there following that job, and now I'm at Nesson. That's awesome. So I got to say, you've worked with a lot of Boston sports teams. Would you say that Boston's the best sports city in America? For sure. I mean, beyond just, you know, how the sports teams do, the fans are so crazy. I grew up in upstate New York, and I've, I've just never seen a fan base like this. You know, growing up in Rochester, we didn't have, like, major sports teams, uh, we really had the Sabres and the Bills that everybody was crazy about. But being in Boston, you know, the fans are really special and they have a lot of um, support for the teams. That's awesome. That's awesome. Obviously, a lot of wins definitely help contribute to the whole passion yeah. in that fan base for sure. So I, I want to know, you mentioned how you kind of were a one person show earlier in your career. Um, for me, coming into college, I want to be a broadcaster long term. And I kind of came in with the misconception that I can just be in front of the camera all the time that I don't have to know anything behind the camera production stuff. Mm -hmm. But obviously I learned very quickly that was not the case. Um, and within the past year, I've been able to really improve those skills with production and all that stuff. So could you kind of explain like, were you kind of the same way heading into college and how did you develop? How did you like help motivate yourself to say, Hey, okay, I'm not going to be in front of the camera all the time. I also got to work on this production skills as well. Yeah, totally. I actually was the exact same way. I knew I wanted to be on camera, but pretty much like all of my experience in college was off camera and behind the scenes. Um, you know, I was kind of under the impression that I would, I mean, I would do anything I could to just get my foot in the door for any media outlet, um, get any experience I could, because I knew how hard it was just to get my foot in the door anywhere. Um, so for me, like most of my opportunities came working in production behind the scenes. Um, you know, I worked some internships at local news stations in Boston in the sports department. And there I was like logging game footage. I would go out in the field sometimes and shadow reporters and do standups here and there, but it wasn't like consistently um, getting reps on camera. It was a lot of just production-based stuff. Um, I worked SEC football for CBS while I was in college and I would go down South 
um, on the weekends to work games. And I would waitress during the week after classes so that I could, you know, pay for my flight down there to work. Um, but, you know, even there, I was just, you know, doing all behind the scenes stuff and learning. And there's so much stuff that you can gain. You know, I did it too as a PA at Nesson in college and all of these places. Like there's so much you can gain when you see how things work behind the scenes. Because now when I go in front of the cameras, um, whether it's, you know, for a live sporting event or it's in studio, I kind of know what's going on in the control room. I know how to work a camera. I know how to edit. And those skills have really proven to be pretty valuable because I can help other people out a lot more than I would have if I didn't know how to do these things. And like, it just makes things more efficient because I think even when you're trying to like produce your own stories in your head um, or like a package or something, if you know how to edit it, you can kind of like piece things out better in your head, uh, just knowing the behind the scenes stuff. Absolutely. So really like all those things just kind of go hand in hand and it can only make you better at the end of the day. And then yeah. you mentioned how you, you worked for SEC as well in college, having that opportunity. I mean, how cool was that as a college student, like being able to have the opportunity for every weekend, like just go down south and cover those games? It was just such an incredible opportunity. Like I said, growing up in upstate New York, we didn't have, you know, big college football teams or anything like that. So obviously I'd, I had seen SEC football games on TV. I had, you know, seen the game atmosphere, you know, when they show sections of the tailgate uh, before the game, you know, in like the footage during the games, but I had never been to one. And if you want to talk about also like following up on connections and people you meet, you never know what door is going to open because I was at a PGA championship uh, golf tournament in Rochester, my hometown, when I was like a sophomore in college. And I was just trying to like sort of network while I was there. I ended up meeting a production coordinator for CBS Sports while I was working that event. I told him, hey, you know, I really want to learn more about the TV industry. Um, get involved, you know, do you have a business card or something? And he gave me a business card. Um, I followed up immediately. And then, you know, later down the line, like a year later, after one of my internships was ending, I was like, hey, I'm going to reach out to him and see if there's any opportunities anywhere. And like, believe it or not, he was like, yeah, if you can get yourself down to work these SEC football games, like you can work every single one. Um, so yeah, I started wow. doing that. But it was just a really cool experience. I mean, I've never seen anything like the crowds at a college football game down in the SEC. It's just, it's crazy. Um, but again, it's like kind of one of those examples where if you are really willing to put yourself out there and meet people and network and also follow up with the people that you meet, you never know where that could lead. And for me, after working those SEC football games, the producer of the show noticed that I was coming down from Boston to do basically, you know, like grunt work behind the scenes, really like taking the trash out sometimes, that kind of stuff. He noticed I was coming down and, you know, he put in a word of recommendation when um, a position opened at CBS Sports in New York. And so when I was in college, I moved down there for seven months and I lived in New York City doing more production stuff for CBS Sports. But I just think like, it's the kind of, no matter if you wanna be on camera or not, it's like the power of saying yes to things because, if you put yourself out there, like it's almost like, you know, it might it might go one way or the other, but you never know unless you try. Exactly. You kind of got to just treat it as one of those things. You just got to try and take advantage of those opportunities because you never know what's going to come next. And sometimes things can just come at an unexpected time, but that's kind of how you move forward in the industry. So I want to talk about how have you seen the sports media industry as a whole? How have you seen it evolve since the first time you entered it? Yeah, certainly. I mean, it has evolved so much. And I think that when I was starting out, um, it was still pretty saturated with like a ton of different media outlets, you know, primarily in Boston. It's such a big sports market. There's a lot of different people covering teams. Um, but I would say that like, just in general, the digital side of things is just growing so much. It seems like a lot of people are getting, you know, their news and their video content from social media and from websites. And, um, as fewer and fewer people maintain their cable subscriptions, I think that news outlets have had to get more creative with the way that they're distributing content. So I know like here at Nesson, we've really focused on ramping up our digital content too, because that way, you know, we can cast a wider net and gain a wider audience and people that don't live in, you know, the, the New England area who wouldn't necessarily get 
cable if if like based on where they live. Um, so I would just say, you know, the digital world has definitely grown a lot. And then there's just a lot of ways to create your own content now too. If you're a college student hoping to get your foot in the door in this industry, now you kind of have no excuse to not like build your reel or get some experience because you can do podcasts, which have grown so much since I started. Um, you can get a tripod and use your iPhone camera and set it up and do some standups like in front of a, a stadium and arena in front of a park, even like all people want to know is that you're getting reps and you can get in front of a camera and do it. Um, and like people are doing videos on TikTok, like making Instagram accounts with sports content. Like you can just be so much more creative right now than ever before. And um, that's a really good way to differentiate yourself. No, for sure. I mean, that's a great point you make there. It feels like everything is all about social media now. And like you said, we really have no excuse now as college students to not want to put ourselves out there because mm -hmm. there's so many great platforms. So I want to know, based on what you've seen with your experience working as a reporter, how have you seen social media kind of affect you as a reporter? What are some pros and cons you see with the whole social media aspect in your career? Yeah, so the pros are that like you're able to spread a message to a larger amount of people. Um, and when I was working for the Patriots, I would say that was like the point in my life where when I was just, I was still just a couple years into the industry. And that was like when my social media following grew the biggest, like on Twitter, because I was in the locker room every single day and I was traveling with the team. I was on the sideline, you know, during the game. So I was able to tweet out and post photos and videos like of access that a typical fan wouldn't normally get. Um, so I just think it's a really good way to, share information to a large amount of people. And I think it's so important to be kind of conscious of the brand that you're putting out on social media, like make sure that the image that you're putting out there for yourself is something that you'd be okay with a potential employer seeing like seeing, like you have to be fully conscious sort of of a brand uh, for yourself that you're putting out there because it's like, I think when we're young and we're in college or when we're not really sure if we wanna be in the, in the media industry or not, like you could tweet some things out that you know, you don't want anything to come back and, and bite you one day or anything that's going to throw off the image that you want to portray um, on social media. And like, you can really grow your brand doing that. Um, so it's a powerful tool and, you know, jobs, careers and stuff that I've, you know, I've been up for jobs before. And sometimes people ask you, you know, what's your Instagram following? Like, what's your Twitter following? Like, they check your accounts, they see if you're active on Twitter, people want to see that and people want to see the engagement, um, like with your audience. And then like, I would say there's obviously cons too, because with social media, people have a direct outlet to give you feedback, whether you've asked for it or not. Uh, so you have to like have a, have a thick skin um, and not worry about what everybody says or what people think, because everybody's gonna have an opinion one way or another. Um, you just have to really put your blinders on and focus on you and also don't look at what other people in the industry are doing. I think like when we're in college, you know, it's a little hard because you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, am I going to find a job? What if my classmate finds a job before me at a really good station? Like, is my opportunity never going to come? Or like, wow, this person just got this job. Am I ever going to get my shot? Like, it's so important to just keep your blinders on because I really truly think like what's meant for you um, won't pass you by. And if you didn't get a job, like yours is coming. That's a great point you make there, because I know, I mean, there's a, a lot of sports media majors uh, at my school, High Point University, and we all kind of want to go into the same realm, but at the same time, it's important to make sure you focus on yourself, too. You know, you just kind of control what you can control and not let what other people are doing sort of affect you um, in a way. So I think you definitely bring up a great point with that, for sure. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's so easy to compare yourself with social media. You know, you can see everything that everybody else is doing and you really see everybody's highlight reels like you don't see the cheer behind the scenes stuff. I even think that sometimes with the stuff that like I post for work on my social media, I'm like, of course, it looks like really fun. And, you know, you're always doing really fun things, but it's a job and you should love your job. But of course, like there's a lot of hard work and sacrifices that people make behind the scenes that, um, no, it's not always shown on social media. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I want to I want to talk about your experience covering the Patriots because I feel like that's just really unique, especially the time where you were a reporter for them, just because they were obviously having some great years. I mean, the Patriots have been one of the most successful franchises, not just in the NFL, but in all of sports. So can you just talk about like, how was it like working for an organization like the Patriots? 
Yeah, you you know, it's funny, like when I think back on it, it was just like such an unbelievable experience, just considering the timing of things. You know, I was there for Tom Brady's last few years and I got to see, you know, him really play out like the tail end of his career in New England. And we went to three straight Super Bowls. Um, I mean, it was it was so cool. And the organization really is like exactly how it seems uh, when you read stories about it. You know, it's everybody has a job to do. Everybody takes their jobs really seriously. Um, you know, it's a kind of a lunch pail mentality organization where you're expected to come into work every day and give it your all. And, and there is that like first person in last person out mentality for sure. Um, but I really can't say enough good things about my time there um, between the players in the locker room, the coaches, um, the people that I worked with um, on the production side of things, the crafts, like it was such, such a great experience. And I'm like so grateful for the opportunities early in my career. Um, you just build relationships that will last you a lifetime. And it, it was really cool getting to see how like the team operates behind the scenes um, in a way that you don't get to see when you work for an outside media outlet. For sure, for sure. I'm sure that was definitely a, a great experience. And mm -hmm. how do you feel about now with NFL expanding the regular season schedule? How do you feel about that? I think it's good. You know, I it's such a tough topic because I'm not the guy, I'm not a guy that's actually out on the field playing the games. <laughs> um, but more games for fans. Um, as long as the guy, like it's not putting any players health at risk, I say, why not? What do you yeah. think? No, I like it. I mean, more football is definitely great. I kind of wish the, the extra game they added was another division game instead mm -hmm. of like an interconference game, but you know, it's more football. So I think that'll be good. The only weird thing about it now is because we're so used to when we're predicting records at the beginning of the season, we'll say like 10 and six or three and 13. Now you've got to add another number into there and say like 11 and six. So it's going to be a little bit weird, but I think we'll all get used to it pretty quick. Totally. And like, it's also interesting too. I know with the COVID restrictions lifting, you know, in yeah. most places around the country, um, it'll be interesting to see how the NFL goes about media access this season. I know as of right now, I don't know if outside media, you know, outside of the team media will be allowed in the locker rooms or anything like that. Um, so I'm just interested to see how the league kind of adapts to the improvements with the COVID situation and just like how the media responds to it. Because as a media member, um, you really do build relationships when you get to like talk to players in the locker room um, and you get a better feel on the atmosphere after games and, and things like that when you're actually directly around the players. So I'm, I'm just very, really curious to see how the league adapts to adapts to the changes. Yeah, me too. I mean, I know it definitely has to be tough for the media, especially this past year, like not being able to actually go in person to interview players and coaches and doing everything virtual. But I want to know in your line of work, even though this past year, a lot of the stuff was conducted virtually, were there any pros or anything that you learned that you feel like actually helped enhance your skills as a reporter? Yeah, I mean, I think you had to kind of really be adaptable to things and like hone your skills in other ways that you weren't necessarily able to before. I mean, with a Zoom interview, um, there wasn't really like one-on-one -on -one access that you would still get when you were in a locker room. Like there's 50 media members on a Zoom call talking to a player and, you know, maybe only 10 questions get answered. So you kind of have to get creative with your stories too. Like if you want to do a story that's off the beaten path and isn't the same three stories that every other media outlet in Boston is doing, um, you either have to pray that your question gets answered or you have to just sort of think outside the box. Um, and for me personally, one of the highlights, um, just in terms of strengthening my skills during COVID was that usually for so much of my career, I was out in the field as a reporter. Um, I spent a lot of time in the studio at Nesson during COVID um, and in a home studio. So those reps, like from reading a teleprompter and just thinking on my feet in the studio um, helped me grow in ways that you know, I might not have gotten all of that studio experience if, if COVID didn't happen and I was still just out in the field all the time. For sure, for sure. I mean, it's all about adapting. Obviously, this past year, that's really what it's been all about for everyone. Yeah. So it's just one of those things you just got to find something new, but it can also provide some benefits at the end of the day. I want to know uh, for you when it comes to 
covering stories and obviously you had players and teams that you get to cover multiple multiple times so how do you feel like do you feel like that helps you in a way like makes you feel just more comfortable interviewing like oh I've interviewed this player six times I feel more comfortable asking them maybe some of the more hard-hitting questions absolutely and I think it also makes the players more comfortable um, doing interviews with you I think that trust is such a big thing and if you have a like working relationship with people and they're familiar with you they're and they trust you like they're going to be more willing to come to you in the future um, for an interview especially if it's something that's hard or if it's or if it's after a loss and they're in a bad mood and they don't necessarily want to do interviews um in the locker room after the game if you go over to them and you have a relationship with them where you've shown that they can trust you and there's been that mutual respect um they will be more willing to do it for you so it's just it really is so relationship based in this industry and um, that's really the beauty of locker room access is like being able to ask um, a player about their story, be like, hey, you know, uh, tell me about this. And like, you can talk to them one on one. That really is um, an important part. It's, it's like networking in all areas of this field, whether it's with the players, like you want to make sure you are putting yourself in a position where they can trust you and respect you. And then it's also like with your peers in the media you want to make sure you're always growing your network in that sense too, because the field is so small and it really is like all about who, you know, exactly. That's a great point you make there. So I want to go ahead now. I want to, I want to take you back in time a little bit. I want to know um, back when you were younger was sports media, was this always something you wanted to do? Was, was it like, Oh, I want to be a sports reporter when I grow up. Yeah, I knew I wanted to work in the media. Um, I wanted to be a journalist. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the sports route or if I wanted to do the traditional news route. Um, when I first got to college, you know, I liked sports. I toggled with the idea, but I found myself doing a couple of uh, traditional news internships and a lot of my classes were centered on traditional news. Um, and then when I made the pivot to sports, I think that was like my end of my sophomore year or, or beginning of my third year um and I just realized like it it was exactly what I like all the things I loved kind of coming together I loved sports and I loved telling stories and the atmosphere being at the events was so cool and so fun um and a little bit more upbeat and like the energy was a little different than some of the really hard-hitting stuff that you do in traditional news that sometimes is really um hard to do so yeah that's kind of how I ended up choosing to go into the sports path. But I think like if someone was on the fence between doing traditional news and sports, whichever way you go can't hurt you either way because I think that like storytelling is storytelling. Good journalistic skills are good journalistic skills. And um, like my first job out of college where I was a reporter involved being both a news reporter and a sports reporter. And I do think like the ability to get to the bottom of stories and like investigate as a news reporter does really help you as you go into sports because you really hone your skills in that sense. Absolutely. And is there anything that you wish you knew in college about sports media that maybe you didn't figure out until a little bit after? I would say that if you want to be on camera, the one thing I wish that I had done a little differently was that if you want to be on camera, make sure you're finding a way to get reps because um, whether it's you're doing them at home, you're having a podcast on the side of your production job, like whatever you do, if you want to be on camera, put yourself in a position, even if it's on your own, to get in front of the camera and get those reps in because I didn't get a ton of reps when I was in college. And I wish that when I left college, I had a bigger portfolio of work that I was proud of. Um, and like, I was able to hone my skills a little better for me, like in my first job out of college, that was kind of where I made a lot of my there was like that was where I made a lot of growth and like you make a little bit of miss like a little bit of mistakes and things like that because you're just starting out and um you're not fully comfortable on camera yet so I think some people are awesome and right out of the gate they are so comfortable on camera and they're so natural um for me I wish that I had even just like set up a tripod in my apartment and force myself to get more reps I focus so much on production that I just like I felt I had to work on that a lot when I graduated. That's a great point right there. I mean, definitely, it's all about just taking advantage of your opportunities. Any reps you can get in front of the camera definitely doesn't hurt to take advantage of them. So I, I'd like to know, um, 
kind of uh, with your line of work right now, uh, how do you balance your busy schedule reporting, but also still finding time to just take time for yourself, relax and kind of still have that social and personal life? Sure. I mean, it's important to make sure that your job isn't your identity. Um, when you're working a job where you are working weekends, nights, holidays, um, you know, the non-traditional nine to five hours that kind of come with this industry, it's important to make sure that you have a life to some degree outside of it and you have other passions outside of this industry because if you base your identity and the way that you view yourself fully on, oh, you know, my job is my life. Um, if, you know, you decide one day this isn't what you want to do anymore or if there's something that you can't control, like you lose your job, if there's a round of layoffs or if your contract is up and you can't find another job, it's just so important to have those other things that make you feel fulfilled and happy because um, it's just so often, it's so often that you get so consumed in this line of work and um, you may not even realize it at the time, but it's just so important to like make sure you're cultivating other interests in your life um, and other relationships too, because, um, yeah, it can, it can really be a huge commitment uh, sticking with this industry. So I just think it's so important. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I wanna know, what was the, the best sporting event you ever covered? Oh my goodness. I think there's been some really cool ones. Um, you know, I got to do the final four with CBS Sports when I was in college. Um, I got to do three Super Bowls. Um, I mean, there's been some, really, some more, I got to do a world series win in Boston, uh, with the Red Sox, but I would truly say like the coolest one was when the Patriots beat the Falcons, um, in the Super Bowl in Houston. I mean, I was a one man band <laughs> with all my equipment there for 10 days. Um, the Boston Herald just like sent me there with full, like creative freedom, basically. And I was like 22 hauling around this like huge amount of equipment surrounded by like a lot of national media outlets who had, you know, like two camera guys, like a, a lighting crew. And I just like had my camera and was fighting my way to get players. It's just like a zoo of media members. Um, and it was so funny because I think during that game, we all thought, oh, okay, the Patriots are losing this one for sure. Um, for me, like I went down to the press conference area in the third quarter to find a place to set up my tripod so that I could make sure that I was getting, um, you know, the Patriots sound when I thought they were going to lose. And there was a bunch of us down there setting up. And then like, you know, there's TVs in there and like you hear the crowd and like people are clapping and like, what the heck is going on? So then I, once I was set up, you know, you go back out, watch some of the game and I just couldn't believe, you know, they came back and won it. And so all of us were like scrambling to move our tripods and cameras over into the winning press conference area. Um, and it was just like unbelievable. I mean, Fal the Falcons ownership was sitting in the winning press conference area before the game was over in the fourth quarter. Like we all thought, okay, the Falcons have this. So it was just, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's funny. Cause like, if you talk to the guys on the Patriots, they're like, Oh, we knew we were going to come back and win this. Like once it got to a certain point, but like for us watching, you know, you can, you can think, Oh, maybe there's a possibility, but like more often than not, you're going to be like, okay, I mean, at this point they're not going to win. So that was cool. Right. No, I mean, to this day that that's still my most memorable Super Bowl I've ever watched. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen just a greater performance in sports history because that was just insane what happened. But like, how is that being at the Super Bowl? You hear a lot of stories of, oh, I went to this Super Bowl. This is how it was like in person. But from your perspective, just how is it like being at a Super Bowl in person? Yeah, it was a really cool experience. It was one of those things where when I was in Houston for my first Super Bowl, I thought, wow, I need to soak all of this in because I don't know if I'll ever have the chance to cover another Super Bowl again. It's kind of one of those bucket list moments in your career where you're like, wow, I'm actually here. I get to cover this, like I'm gonna soak it all in. And so obviously being there for 10 days, like working really long days, you know, by the middle of the week, I'm so tired and I'm like, oh man. But at the same time you have that like adrenaline going cause you're like, this is so cool. And I wanna enjoy every second of it. Um, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of media members covering the event. Um, you have to kind of, if you're by yourself or if you're with another, unless you're with like ESPN or NFL Network, 
Um, you have to kind of like fight your way in with your camera to make sure you're getting good footage um, at the player availabilities, but essentially how they how they run it um, in non COVID times like when everything is not virtual is basically every day, like I think three of the days or four of the days during the week leading up to the game. They have these media availabilities where there's like two different rooms, one would be for like each team and one day they'll have like the offensive players out there and you can go around and get sound from them and then one day they'll have the defensive players out um, and you can talk to them and like sometimes they'll have you know like the quarterbacks and like the captains and the star players at different podiums and you can go up to them it's just like a lot of access it's really cool the energy's high there's a lot of good storylines um, but it's like a little chaotic but once the game actually rolls around it's really fun and um, when I was like actually with the Patriots team co covering the game, like your access is even different than it is when you're with outside media because like you have, you go on the field before the game to get footage of the players and, and things like that, which um, I'll never be able to do ever again. <laughs> That's definitely quite a dream and just quite an amazing experience for sure. So uh, I wanna know um, as, a, as a reporter, like how have you seen your, your sort of like your reporting style, if it has, like, has it changed throughout the years? Is it kind of like, oh, I'm interviewing this person. I might want to ask them different questions or have a different approach than if I'm interviewing this other person. Um, I think it's more just like getting more comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. The more you do it, like the more comfortable you get in front of the camera, the more comfortable you are asking people questions. Um, so I really think it's like a comfort thing above all, um, just like getting the reps, building those relationships. If you're familiar with people, like there's not any nerves when you're asking them questions or anything like that. It's just making sure you're fully comfortable. Most definitely. Just the more reps you get, the more comfortable you get, you can only get better as time goes exactly. on. So I want to know um, where you are right now with your position you have. What's kind of, is there like a, a typical normal day routine or is it like every day is different? Um, I would say during COVID, it was pretty similar day to day right now as restrictions are lifting every day is a little different. Um, if I'm in a, if I'm in studio during the day, usually I'll come in look up the biggest Boston based news stories of the day or like big national news stories and I'll write some scripts um, and I'll work with a producer and we'll shoot, we'll shoot like a bunch of breaking news hits in the morning. Um, and then we'll tape some segments for the nightly show, like before my day shift would end. Um, if I'm working a night shift, usually, you know, you wait for all the games to end, you write a script for the show that airs in the morning and you tape that like the last thing of the night so that everything's set to go and it airs in the morning. Um, and then when you're out in the field, your shift kind of changes based on like the game schedule or, you know, whatever you have to do. So every day is, is typically different um, in like fully non COVID times. And so I'm excited that I think hopefully this summer there will, there will be more opportunities to get, you know, different content out in the field. Most definitely. Yeah. Hopefully things can just get back to the way they used to be. And, you know, <laughs> we can have full capacity crowds everywhere. And yeah, it's definitely been a tough time, but you know, we've been working through it. Mm -hmm, exactly. Okay, Meredith, so I want to go ahead and I want to end this interview asking you a couple of rapid fire questions if you're up for it. Okay. Okay. So if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Mm, probably, oh, this is tough. I'm, I'm not doing this rapid fire. <laughs> Invisibility. <laughs> okay. If you could describe your reporting style using just one word, what word would, uh, what would, would that be? more serious <laughs> okay if you could describe boston sports using just one word what would it be fun what's one food you can't live without pizza <laughs> favorite sports movie favorite sports what'd you say uh favorite sports movie oh the blind side nice that's a good one that's a good one favorite social media platform twitter nice if you weren't working in the sports media industry, what would you be doing right now? I think about this a lot. I'm not sure. Um, I'd probably 
be doing either like running my own sort of company that I like started or I would be probably doing some kind of interactive job where I'm out in the field like selling things maybe like medical device sales or something like that where you're just like interacting with people all day because that's like what really fuels my energy and that's why I love reporting so much nice funniest athlete you've ever interviewed Gronk <laughs> white tiger uh, from the mass singers <laughs> that's understandable and uh what's one fun fact that a lot of people do not know about Meredith Gorman um I skipped kindergarten <laughs> nice so I was always the youngest person in my grade, um, like pretty much even until I graduated college. So yes, I went to college when I was 17 and I didn't wow. turn 18 until I was almost done with my freshman year of college. So <laughs> I'd be the young one in college and in yeah. high school because I didn't even get my driver's license till like my senior year. Oh, that's, that's definitely unique. So I like, I love that fun fact. Okay, Hi. Meredith. Well, thank you so, so much again for coming onto the podcast today. I mean, to have someone like you on here, it's truly an honor. I mean, you've done some incredible things and I, mean, I just can't wait to see what else you do in the sports media industry. Thank you. Well, I feel the same way about you and I'm so excited to see, you know, what's coming for you in the future. You are so talented and the sky's definitely the limit for you. I really appreciate that. And if um, people want to go ahead and follow you on social media, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Mayor Gorman, on Instagram at Mayor Gorman. Um, and yeah, hopefully there'll be some exciting content for you if you follow me on there. I'm sure there will. Okay. Thank you so much again for coming on, Meredith. No problem. Thank you. All right, fellas. So that was a sports student interview with Meredith Gorman. Another big shout out to Meredith for coming on. I mean, she is incredibly talented at what she does, and it was such an honor having her on the podcast today. But that'll do it for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in my next one. All right, y'all. Take care. Sports student signing out. Peace.